Up until now, we've heard it mentioned a lot, but we still have not yet heard a lot of detail. So today, let's dig into Hydra heads, the first step towards the full Hydra vision, and the first big step towards ultimate Cardano scalability. It's time for the weekly report. Welcome back to Woodland Pools. Today, it's time for the weekly report. Let's jump in. So Hydra is gonna be rolled out as a suite of protocols, and the first one that's gonna come out is the Hydra head. So we wanted to take a look at this article that was written by Matthias Bencourt, who's one of the software engineering leads at Input Output, and see what he has to say about how it fits into the bigger picture, and also clarify some confusions that have been going on in the community. So as we know, right now, Cardano is in the foothills of the Basho phase. And as we've talked about multiple times on the channel, Basho is all about scaling and network optimization. The main focus of input output last year was getting smart contracts up and running. And the main focus this year is all about how do we scale from here. And the Hydra protocol family is a key component for this. So let's see what he has to say. In this article, the Hydra engineering team outlines their current progress, their approach, and the near and long-term roadmap. And we're gonna go into detail into all of these things. But let's start by taking a look at what a Hydra head is. A Hydra head is a provably secure isomorphic state channel. And a simple way to think about this is if you think about the Cardano layer one blockchain as a ledger of transactions where everybody on the blockchain knows all the details of all the transactions, a Hydra head is an off-chain mini ledger that instead of including all participants on the blockchain has a restricted set of participants. And so it works similarly, but a lot faster than the main on-chain ledger. And if that still seems really confusing, don't worry. He provides a really, really great analogy here where we can think of heads as private poker tables. So imagine it this way. Let's say that the layer one Cardano Cardano blockchain down here is the whole casino. And in the casino, you have your certain amount of chips that you have, and then the Hydra head is a poker table that you walk up to and you start playing the game. So now let's say that Alice, Bob, and Susan all decide to play at this Hydra head poker table. Now, similar to poker, you can't sit at the table and not play. So if someone doesn't play, then the game doesn't progress. And whatever's happened to that point, everyone can just walk away with the chips that they have. But so our three people join this game, they play the game for some amount of time, and then when the game is over and they leave the game, they all walk away with potentially a new set of chips. We see Alice here has now gone from 100 to 150, Bob has gone from 100 to 150, and poor Susan went from 200 and lost 100 at the game. And there's actually a really great analogy because if you continue this sort of thought experiment all the way through, now imagine these three people go from the poker table over to the roulette table. The person who's running the roulette table doesn't care about what hands were played and who won which hands and the detail of all the sequencing that happened. The person running the roulette table, all they care about is how many chips do you have right now to play the game? And so when you think of it this way, with the layer one Cardano blockchain being the whole casino itself, and then the layer two Hydra head being the poker table, we can think of it in terms of that the dealer at the table, the on-chain script that's running on the Hydra head, that's what makes sure that everyone plays by the rules and that no one cheats. So you have that security that everyone is playing by the right rules and everyone's doing what they say they're gonna do because you have this dedicated dealer, this Plutus script that's running on the separate head. So you're confident that there's no cheating going on there. But then when everybody walks away from the table, the final result of all the chips is known to everybody back at the casino on layer one Cardano blockchain. But the history of all the actions and every hand that was won and lost is only known to the people that played. And this is really useful because that way you're not burdening the rest of the blockchain with all these microtransactions that were going on, you just say, look, we all started with this much, we did a bunch of stuff, and then we finished up with this much. Which really, when you think about the global state of the ledger and the global state of the casino, the person running the roulette table doesn't care how the game went. They just wanna know how many chips did you end up with. So the improvement gains there are obvious and we can see how that will make things better. But he brings up a good point here about how there's been a lot of talk about how Hydra is going to be the ultimate solution for Cardano scalability. And admittedly, it's because a lot of people don't have any detail about how Hydra is going to work or where it kind of fits in. So that's where this article is very timely and very good. So as he mentions here, the Hydra heads are an essential building block that leverages the power of extended UTXO, and it's a critical element in the scalability journey, but it is not the final destination. It is both not the final destination for Hydra itself, and then Hydra as a solution is not gonna be the final destination for scalability. Let's not forget that we recently talked about 11 different ways that Cardano is going to scale. So we can't get overly excited and just think like, okay, great, this first release of Hydra coming out in June is gonna fix everything. That's not gonna be the case but this is gonna be a huge step in the right direction. And the right direction that we're talking about, obviously, is scalability. And another really good thing that he digs into here is the notion of transactions per second. A lot of people, especially from other blockchains, get hung up on this like notion of TPS, and that's sort of like the ultimate thing to look at. But he brings up another really great analogy to think about in terms of why TPS isn't the final thing. As he says, before talking about scalability metrics, let's clarify a few things about transactions per second. 
TPS is probably the least meaningful metric to consider as a means of comparison because, and this is the critical important thing, transactions come in different shapes and sizes. What a transaction looks like on the Ethereum blockchain or on Solana or on Cardano are dramatically different. And the way to think about it is like this. Think about a highway in vehicles. You can look at how many vehicles per second a highway has, but if we have no common definition of what a vehicle is, then comparing 10 VPS to 100 VPS means nothing, right? Because if the 10 vehicles that you're looking at in your example are massive cargo trucks, does that make sense to compare them to 100 scooters in terms of the delivery capability, like how much they can actually move? Right? And so similarly, a transaction that's carrying hundreds of native assets and outputs is certainly not the same as a single ADA payment between two actors. And now to be clear, using TPS as a metric within the same context, so for example, to compare two versions of a Cardano node is meaningful, but using it as a measure to compare two different blockchains is not. So if you're gonna compare different blockchains, the three things that you need to look at are really throughput, finality, and concurrency. Throughput is the amount of data that's processed in a system in a given amount of time. Finality is the amount of time that it takes for the action to be considered immutable and true for everybody on the blockchain. And then concurrency is how much work can you do in parallel without these actors blocking each other or running into each other. So in our poker table example, a Hydra head where you have a limited amount of people that are all sitting at the table together has a near instant finality within the head because everybody knows what's going on at all times. And from a concurrency standpoint, since Plutus and therefore Hydra heads utilize EUTX so they can process non-conflicting transactions concurrently. So we're good there as well. And so then in terms of final calculations, they're currently in the process of benchmarking what a real implementation will look like in terms of throughput and finality. But this is a good sort of like starting place for us to keep in mind that what we need to think about is throughput, finality, and concurrency, and stop thinking about transactions per second. So we're gonna hear more about these things, but it's good that he's sort of setting this foundation now and setting up some common vocabulary that we can all use so that when the results of some of these benchmarking things are done, we're all at least speaking the same language and we can see what it actually means. So, okay, so the goal, right, is to try and get layer one ultimate scalability, but we're talking about Hydra heads. So when are the heads themselves actually useful? Hydra heads really shine when it's a small group of participants that need to process many quick interactions. So some examples that we can imagine is like a pay per use API service. Like imagine you've got sort of a sequence of transactions going back and forth between two, three or 10 people. And then once that's all done, you wanna settle it back down. Or a bank to bank private network where it's maybe just one or two or three banks that are sending things back and forth. And then every now and then they just reconcile back with the layer one blockchain. Or a really fast paced auction. You can imagine like lots of bids flying in and out. But at the end of the day, the layer one blockchain, all they care about is this asset that was being bid on, who won? Nobody cares about the sequence of all of the different bids as long as you trust the auctioneer was actually handling everything appropriately. So depending on the use case, some of these heads might be long running for months, some might be shorter and only last a few hours. But the important thing to keep in mind is while these Hydra heads are going to be very useful for these specific use cases, at the outset, they're not going to be a silver bullet that immediately solves all congestion problems on the network, especially for things where you need everyone in the network to know about something all at once or a sequence of things all at once. It'll be really good for small groups that are having quick transactions between each other that you can reconcile later. But for some of these other scalability things, that's where some of the other improvements come in and also where the subsequent releases of Hydra come in to deal with some of these other issues. This is not gonna be a big bang release, but an iterative release cycle. And he mentions earlier in the article that initially there were some thoughts on how Hydra was gonna be implemented, but as the blockchain matured and the actual usage of it became clear, the the needs and therefore the solutions changed along the way. So because of that, they want to understand the developer challenges and make sure that the needs are being met to ultimately ensure that they're building something useful. So in addition to it being an iterative release cycle, they're developing Hydrahead as an open source GitHub project and you can actually now see the project's roadmap live on GitHub. We'll link this down below, but you can see all the main features that are planned and there's also now an open source project that anyone in the community can contribute to. We're gonna hear more about the Hydra heads in February's mid-month update, and we'll let you know the highlights of that when it comes out. And obviously, as we get close to these major release dates of this iterative release cycle, we'll let you know the things to expect as we're getting to these different hard fork events. Let us know what you're excited about, about the Hydra project and Hydra heads. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.